joined by a member of our show. He's a part of the show as well. Uh, we talk to him every Monday. Uh, they play usually on the weekends, but they played yesterday, so Sam Darnold joins us now. And I have a nice warm welcome for the quarterback of the Jets, Sam Darnold. I think people are upset he cut the line, though. He cut the line, really. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Darnold reported on 98.7 ESPN, brought by Miller Light and the New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association. I, I always wonder, Sam, and thank you for coming in after playing last night. When you play a game like that, the next day, do you ache? Do you feel pain? Uh, yeah, you know, body's aching a little bit, yeah. uh, but it's nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, you know, I thought really for the most part our, our offensive line did a really good job. I mean, running the football, uh, everyone did a really good job in the running game. I thought, I thought I, I could have done a lot better in the pass game. Uh, again, really good team. We had our chances in the first half, but you know, once they got going on offense, and you know, when we kind of stalled a little bit there in the in the beginning of the second half. It was hard to stop him. I, I don't know if you got this feeling, and I saw some of your teammates said this as well. I, I just had the feeling watching the game, if you guys scored at the end of the second quarter, it might have been a different vibe. I don't know if you win, but it might have been a different vibe. Do you feel that? 100%. I mean, when you're down there, especially against a good team, really against anyone in the NFL, if, you know, if you get a chance to go down there and score at the end of a, at the end of a half, uh, you got to make the most of that opportunity. Uh, you know, I think that killed us, especially the turnover. Uh, that was a dumb decision. Uh, you know, just poor, poor timing as well. Uh, so it was just... You know, it sucked going into the half, having that happen, uh, and then in the second half, we couldn't really get anything going there in the third quarter. Is this the best team you faced this year? Um, it's hard to say. It's really? hard to say, yeah. Uh, I mean, that offense was rolling. Um, you know, that Lamar is playing about as well as anyone could play uh, in the league right now. Um, so, and their defense was tough. So, that was one of our, our toughest challenges so far this year, for sure. Did you, uh, did, did you and Lamar have any dealings uh, like post-college, pre-NFL during that time at all, or no? Uh, no. And so, no. are you really just getting to watch him for the first time sort of now as it's unfolding in front of all of us? I mean, I watched him at Louisville uh, when he won the Heisman. I mean, he was... He was balling then, too. I mean, I, I had a good feeling that he would do really uh, spectacular in the NFL, too. So, so do you um, think it was weird, though, when people started doubting him before the draft? Like, I, I always fi found it odd that a Heisman Trophy I mean, people, are doubt, people doubt everyone uh, before the draft. They, they, are, they try to find everything that's wrong with it, which they should do. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's a huge, especially if you're going to take a quarterback in the first, second round. Uh, you know, that's that's an important pick, especially if you're going to pick a quarterback there. So um, people are going to doubt any time you pick a quarterback in the first round, they're going to doubt that person. But um, all things considered, I think he's doing a great job handling it, and he's been balling. You know, I wanted to ask you this because I asked you about how your body felt. And you said, you know, you're a little lanky. That's, that's the game. Can he continue to play like that? and run and get hit at more than most quarterbacks and survive. We'll see. I think, you know, Vic did it. Uh, Michael Vick was able to do it all those years. Um, you know, there's been there's been plenty of quarterbacks, I think, especially early on in the NFL, uh, that were able to do it. You know, so um, I think if anyone could do it, he could. Towards the end of the game, the cameras caught you having a bit of a, I wouldn't say heated conversation with right. Gase, but you seemed like you were frustrated. Anything to that? No, no, there's nothing to it. And it wasn't, you know, I wasn't frustrated with Gase or anything like that. It was the situation. Uh, I believe it was in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, it was just a frustrating time. We uh, went for it on fourth and short. Didn't get it. Um, so it was just kind of talking about the play and, um, it wasn't me, you know, complaining to Gase about anything or anything like that. It was just both of us being frustrated. Now, if you watch the video, I, I don't know if you're really going to take us into the conversation, but the backup quarterback, I think, was standing to the right. You had your helmet on. You said something to Gase, and the look on what was Fails face? David Fails. Yeah, yes. he was like, ooh, ooh. I mean, <laughs> it, he was stunned at what you said. I mean, did you say anything that would stun him? No. No. Have you uh, seen what the video I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. I have to look this up now because I've not seen this. <laughs> um, yeah, I said it earlier in an interview, but you know, Davis, he's, you know, he makes that face every now and then for no reason. <laughs> but uh, and he he gave you know, uh, Davis is an awesome guy, awesome person. Uh, but there was, 
you know, it was a conversation, uh, and it wasn't heated. I think we were both just frustrated at what was going on, and uh, that was really it. There was nothing really to it. Do you have a relationship that if you were frustrated or you disagreed with something that you could have that conversation? Absolutely. It sure Absolutely. seems, I'm watching the video, it seems that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you no, you I, look like people who know each other are a little pissed off in the moment. It seems yeah, like a normal you know, thing. I think uh, there's definitely better ways, you know, if, if we are going to hash it out, which that wasn't even the case at that moment. It. But, you know, if we are going to hash it out, it's not going to be on the field. We both know better than that. Uh, but I think during that situation, during that span of the game, when things were kind of getting out of control there late in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, my emotions, or really our emotions, got the best of us. If you get home tonight, go go Google Phil Sims and Bill Parcells. I mean, Parcells would Paul. scream at him constantly. That was more one-sided. Yeah, Phil didn't answer back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Adam Gase never told you to go sit the blank down, right? <laughs> he hasn't done that yet, has right, he? Right, no. And if he, <laughs> if he did, I would probably not say anything back to him. Either, so. has, has, I mean, I, I don't want to be dramatic, but has this been everything that could go wrong this season has gone wrong? Um... I mean, there's a. We could make a lot of excuses right. for why you know we're not doing well or we're not winning games, but you know our team's done a great job of being resilient and going out there and making the most of every Sunday or Thursday night. So uh, we've been doing, you know, we've been, we've we've also had opportunity. I mean, the end of that second half, I, like we said, you were uh, moving the ball. We were moving the ball. We were we were playing well, uh, and then I just made that one critical error, uh, the turnover that killed us and. Uh, you know, but we're not far off. I know it seems like it, but I mean, we're not far off and guys in the locker room believe and that's really the only thing that matters. Well, one thing that has worked out this year that you can affirmatively point to is the, the dynamic between you and Jameson Crowder. Um, what's your guys' relationship like and how nice of a security blanket is he to have? I'm, I'm a Redskins yeah. fan. I miss him terribly, <laughs> but right. it, it's certainly your guys' game. Yeah, Crowder's awesome. Uh, he just goes out there. Uh, you know, you can kind of tell when he plays. I, I say this about a lot of guys, and if they're a receiver, if they're a skilled player, you can tell that he's played basketball before and that he was a really good basketball player. He's just got a really good feel out there. And for him, just to almost on that first touchdown, it felt like the play was almost over. And then, you know, he kind of just snuck in the back corner, and I kind of felt him, and the defender's, you know, eyes were on him, and he wasn't looking at me, so I thought I could fit the ball in there. And... You know, he did a really good job of coming back after the one that he dropped. And, uh, yeah, I've just, you know, had a really good rapport with him this whole year. And, um, again, he's a, he's a really good person, really good dude. Did you want to come right back to him after he dropped that one? I mean, you could see it on his <laughs> face. I mean, is that important for a quarterback? Here, here, let me get right back so it's not on his mind. Absolutely. I mean, you're not thinking about it uh, too much. But for me, it's in that moment, it's like, all right, whoever's open, I'm going to throw it to him. You okay. know, you're not really thinking, oh, i got to come back to him because he just dropped it. You know, we're professionals. We know that we have a job to do, and we're, we're going to get it done if, if things don't happen the way they're supposed to. Like, if he doesn't catch a ball, he knows I'm coming right back to him if he's open. Is anything said? I mean, I always wonder what, what, what's said in that huddle. Like, after he drops it, do you look at him and go, well, what, what was that? I don't know, you just don't say a word. No, I mean, I kind of, you know, me and Crowder have a good relationship. I kind of smiled at him like, come on, bro, are you serious? <laughs> Especially after, after he caught the touchdown afterwards. Right. That's when I was like... Could have made it a lot easier for you to come the first time. So. Yeah, Sam, I know you're not an excuse maker, but the numbers don't lie. Road teams on Thursday, especially if they're like a two-touchdown dog, it, it, it's impossible. It, it really is. I mean, how how unfair is it to play these Thursday games, especially short turnaround against great teams? I mean, everybody has to do it, but for somebody that's used to playing once a week, sure. how tough is it to just turn around on a Sunday and then play that next Thursday? It's tough, but, I mean, every single game you play in the NFL is tough. Uh, you know, it's going from Sunday to Thursday. You have to cram it in. You have to cram your schedules in just like the home team does. You know, the only difference is us traveling, uh, which wasn't bad. You know, it was only a two-and-a-half, three-hour train ride that we took to Baltimore. So, I mean, it's not – it wasn't bad. And, you know, there's – I don't think there's really anything to it. It might be – Coincidence, I think if now if teams have to go cross country, I think that's a different scenario. But uh, for us, it, it wasn't an excuse at all. We'll talk with Jet quarterback Sam Darnold. We'll take a brief time out. We'll come on back. We'll finish it up until 6 o'clock with Sam. But Sam, nice enough to come into Buffalo Wild Wings. The fans are thrilled to see him. A lot of Sam Darnold jerseys there. And we'll be back in just a moment right here on Yes and 98.7 ESPN. Show everybody. We're in the middle of the Sam Darnold Report brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer brewed for more taste and only 96 calories. Miller Lite, hold true. 
and the New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association. To learn more about the New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association, check out nyssspca.net. And we are joined here at Buffalo Wild Wings in the flesh by Jets quarterback Sam Darnold. And, and, and Don, I want to tell you what kind of friend you have in Peter. So during the break, you walk, you're meeting fans, and Peter shows Sam the picture of your unrequited high five. Do you have any questions? We ask you a lot of questions every week. You want to ask Don anything about what happened there? Yeah, what are you, uh, what were you thinking? On that? <laughs> I wanted to give her a high five. She's a nice woman, but she didn't see, so you what should I do? The, you gotta wait for the eye contact. Yeah, that's, I couldn't agree more. And how do you not bail on it? You gotta know when to throw the ball away. Am I right, Sam? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah. say it to you. Yeah. you just well, got, I'm learning. Ah, it's hot. You gotta get it. You just kept going to the face. Well, I was hoping it, I'd get Unless attention. Unless you would see it. Eye yeah. contact had already sailed. So now what do I, what I got to adjust? You should have yeah. just mushed her face. I Sometimes think it it's just... Yeah, but the hand in front of her face was intrusive. It's okay. Well, I, I bounced back with Alex Lee. Okay, great. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm completing 50% of my pass. <laughs> it's not NFL worthy, but, you know. Some, some backup quarterbacks with less have made more. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, um, that's a good point. I read something in the paper today. Uh, after the specific amount of games that you've played, paired up against what Joe Namath did, I don't know if you saw this, your numbers are better than Joe Namath's. Touchdowns, interceptions, completion percentage. I mean, does the specter of Joe Namath hang over this whole team, especially a quarterback? No, I mean, it's a little bit... Football's a little bit different nowadays, yeah. too. I mean, we're throwing the ball a little bit more, but... Uh, Joe's Joe, man. I mean, his, I mean, he is just such a legend for us, uh, just at the Jets. I mean, we haven't won a Super Bowl since he was here, and he's just kind of that, I mean, you know, he won number one uh, most characteristic guy in the NFL, mm -hmm. you know, NFL claimed him that guy, so he's just an awesome guy. Whenever he comes around, he comes around every now and then, too. He's He's a great dude to be around. Do you have a substantive uh, conversation with him ever? Absolutely. And does he talk quarterbacking? Does he talk broader yeah. scope? Yeah, I mean, he talks everything. He talks uh, he talks everything from when he was on the streets, you know, Broadway Joe, mm -hmm. uh, and then when he was out on the field. And you guys text? It's No, no, we don't. Just talk in person? We just talk in person, okay. yeah. Uh, and, you know, whenever he comes around, he's, he's nothing but great, and um, he gives us two cents. I mean, he's, he's also funny. He... He always says, you know, I don't know how much I could give you. You know, I can't give you much advice because football is so different nowadays. Like, right. All the coverages and pressures people are bringing are so much different. But, uh, yeah, he has a fun time out there, and, and we're always so lucky to have him. It's statistically different, but I would think the position's the same as far as being a leader of men, uh, communicating in the huddle. I mean, I, w I would think that probably in the 100 years yeah. of the NFL, that probably hasn't changed at all, right? No, no, it hasn't. Um, I think just the way that he was with his teammates. Um, and the thing is, too, is he won't he won't talk about it very much. you got to go to other people to hear about how great he was with his teammates, which is, in my opinion, the side of someone who was really great, was a really great leader. So, um, you know, he was he was amazing with his teammates. And, you know, that's that's something that I aspire to be. Now, Sam, this has not been the season that anybody envisioned uh, for the Jets. I'm certainly not you, I'm sure. Um, and then you look around this place, and there are people with your jersey on, people carrying Jet helmets, and the Jet fans are there. They're hungry. I mean, what does that mean to you to see that kind of support despite a season that you would probably rather have be better? No doubt. Um, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's nothing... You know, no one wants to go through it, whether you're a fan, a player, a coach. Um, it sucks. I mean, but at the same time, I know it doesn't look like it, but we're getting better every single day. And, you know, f for you guys to be able to come out there on Sundays and support us and be here and supporting uh, the great Michael K. show and uh, just the, the whole Jets community has been nothing but amazing for us. Uh, throughout since I've been here at least you know this, this these last couple of years so. can you can you envision what it would be like if you guys did win and win big and win consistently have you envisioned that yeah it would be amazing uh -huh. uh, there'd be nothing like it and you know it's coming it's coming one day now you say that improvements are happening and it's hard to see them because of the record so can you tell us in layman's terms what's getting better what do you feel good about I think for me personally, I, I'm just, I'm getting the offense, uh, you know, every single day, day in and day out. I feel like I'm getting so much better at 
um, understanding the offense and uh, you know what just what's going on I mean there's so much that goes into it and um, and just seeing coverages and different pressures how teams are bringing them I mean there's so much that goes into playing quarterback and I feel like I'm just understanding it every single day better and better um, you know that's that's really it is, uh, is New York the metropolitan area what you envisioned it was going to be when you were drafted here um, it's a little bit more you know I yeah. thought it'd be similar to LA but it, it's a little bit more than LA for sure and um, I'm getting used to it every single day is a new experience especially in the city if I ever make it out there so uh, yeah it's a lot but it's a good thing too all right this is a very hard question it's been a tumultuous week do you really believe that Le'Veon Bell rolled to 251? Honestly. <laughs> That's an incredible bowling score. It is. It's great. And, yeah, I don't know if I believe it. Has he ever indicated that he's that good a bowler previously? No. I mean, he's never said anything about bowling. And, and he's just showing up on random showing Saturday night sick. Off the sickness, rolling, as he said. Yeah. 250s, 251, 250. Yeah. I don't I'm know. The, the bumpers. I think <laughs> he yeah. bumpers, maybe, with bumpers. Maybe. What's your, uh, what are your, you play basketball, right? Yeah. And what else? What are your other, what other sports are you good at? I you? played baseball. I uh, played some beach volleyball. Uh, you golfer or no? Not a, not a huge golfer. I'm trying to get into it. <laughs> you'll, you'll get there. That's, yeah. that, that's Don't bother. It's not worth it. No, it's no, above you'll, it. You'll age into you're above it. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let I take me. it you're not very good. He, no, I, no, I, I, don't, I hate it. He has <laughs> made the statement if they played the Masters in his backyard, he would call the authorities. He wouldn't even look. He wow. wouldn't look out yeah, of the I, I will watch every... <laughs> that's him. <laughs> I got to tell you this, and since you're here, we can tell you this to your face. We've had weekly guests before, and the only one that you even compare to is Eli Manning. No matter what the game the previous time, Eli Manning would call in when he was supposed to call in. Other people had bad phones. They, they just didn't feel great about being on. I, I even told our people, listen, he just played last night. If he doesn't want to come here, we shouldn't have him come. And they said, oh, he'll, he'll come. You've been nothing but class throughout a very difficult season. And we thank you for that. We're so happy and proud that you're part of the show. Appreciate that. Well, I thank you guys yeah, for not asking me the tough questions. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Sam. Merry, yes, Christmas, Merry Christmas, guys. Happy holidays. All right. That's Sam Darnold, everybody.